Mm-hmm. Today, I answer your burning questions about vitamin C. Woo! Hey, hey, coucou. Hello, everybody. I hope you're all doing good. Well, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Cyril. I used to be a stem cell researcher for quite some time. And this is why I can tell you about the science behind skincare ingredients. Well, actually, about L-ascorbic acid, because this is the topic of today. I have asked you in my story, so on Instagram. By the way, are you following me on Instagram? Are you? <laughs> I've asked you basically your question about uh, vitamin C. And well, today I'm going to answer all of them. So I put them in three uh, categories. Some of them were a little bit redundant. So um, I put them like in as uh, the same question. But it was really interesting uh, to make a video like this. So if you like it, maybe I will do another one about another uh, actives or something like that so definitely leave your comments down below to tell me and by the way if you are new you know what to do subscribe and don't forget um, the bell so uh, the first category uh, no I'm going just to tell you the three categories so the first one is how to choose the best vitamin C uh, products then is how to layer them uh, the third one my god I cannot deal with my fingers today, <laughs> is what are the best products using vitamin C? And actually there is a fourth category, oh boy, uh, which is like the sort of random questions, uh, but some of them are really, really um, interesting. So uh, let's see the first question. I have my computer right here. This is why I'm looking in this uh, direction. So the first question, which relates to how to choose the best uh, vitamin C products, which is what is the best form of um, vitamin C? Uh, I am a scientific, you know this, I am a biologist, I used to be a researcher, I have a PhD in biology, so for me, the terminology uh, are very, very uh, important. So vitamin C, there is only one form of vitamin C, which is L-ascorbic uh, acid. The rest, it is not vitamin C. This is derivative of vitamin C. Why I am always emphasizing uh, this is because vitamin C, L-ascorbic acid, is naturally occurring in your skin, especially in your epidermis, but also in your dermis. In your epidermis, the main role of vitamin C is to be a scavenger for free radicals, aka our natural antioxidants. And there are plenty of studies that show that when the skin is exposed to the sun, high UVB, for example, and also why I always recommend SPF 50 plus because the less UVB, the better. Your cells are using the vitamin C to protect them against the aggressions, yes, the aggressions of uh, UVB. And the skin is completely depleted from vitamin C very, very fast when exposed to um, UV. For derivatives, we are not sure that the skin cells are able to turn those derivatives into antioxidants. Does it, does it mean that the derivatives are not working? No, you will, st you will still have like the skin brightening effect. For example, for most of them, um, this is something that is proven. But for the antioxidant capacity, maybe not. So I cannot be sure. So why not using like the holy grail standard if you can um, be sensitive to it. So there is one form of vitamin C, L-ascorbic um, acid. Now, how to select a good vitamin C uh, serum? Um, so first thing first, which is very important, if it is a vitamin C serum, it means that this is an L-ascorbic uh, serum, so it has to be in a water base. If it is not in a water base, like it, if it is dispersed in silicone, for example, or in squalane, high the ordinary, most likely you will not be able to properly control the pH. Why is it relevant? It's because Dr. Pinel in early 2000 have actually shown that for the vitamin C to penetrate the skin, it has to be formulated at a pH uh, below 4, so it's uh, around 3.6 or 3.4. This is the optimal uh, pH because at that pH, the vitamin C, the alascorbic acid, the charge of the acid are neutralized, very energy, but basically can penetrate your stratum corneum, your skin barrier, and goes into the epidermis where your cells needs the vitamin C. Basically, that's, that is uh, why. The only, I would say, downsides of the study that it only has been done in uh, using pig skin, which is not necessarily bad, but I would love that it, it is done on us, us human being. Um, yeah. So I guess I will have to be back in the lab to, to do those experiments or I still to be the boss and tell my students to do it for me, something like that. But, but um, anyway, so first of all, check the pH. If a brand sold you a vitamin C without disclosing the pH, I'm always like, oh. 
I already don't like this. It has to be uh, under four. Of course, you can use like pH paper and gives you an idea of the pH. It has to be around three. Uh, something else, the concentration, of course. The optimal concentration for vitamin C, so L-ascorbic acid, is between 10% and 20%. I really like the sweet spot of the sweet spot of 15%. 20% is really for those of you who want to uh, tackle even more hyperpigmentation, but I would not start with uh, 20%. Um, so yeah, basically that's it. Concentration, the pH, yeah. Also make sure that the overall formula is really water-based and doesn't have too, too much of emollients because I'm always worried that the emollient will slow down the, the penetration of vitamin C, which is important for vitamin C because the longer the vitamin C stir in the air and the more time it has to, inter to interact with oxygen and therefore to be oxidized, which is not really something um, that you want. So uh, another question was, do the formulation matters? Absolutely, yes. And what is the optimal concentration? I've already told you is between 10 to 20% and 50% is like the sweet spot, like the, the yes. Okay, the other category is basically how to layer your vitamin C serum and what to uh, use it. I make a difference between layering your products in general, whether they are actives or not, and mixing your product, which is very important. When you mix a product, for example, you are taking uh, two products. So let's have an example, like this derivative of vitamin C. <laughs> I didn't do it on purpose. Maybe I did it, which is the Arscobil Tetra isopalmitate form of vitamin C, which I really like, 20%. And by the way, tell me if you want me to make like a whole video dedicated only to derivatives, because some of them, they are very interesting. And this one, uh, which is the famous Siglo, I say famous because I'm always talking about this one, which is the 15% of vitamin C, so I'll ask of acid from Geek um, and Gorgeous. So you cannot mix them. Put your hands, put a drop of the Siglo, put a drops of the derivative, mix it. No, you cannot do it. The vitamin C has to be used as a first layer. So after either you cleanse your skin or you just rinse your skin, you are going to apply the vitamin C on slightly dumb uh, skin. Don't wait. This is one of the questions. Does it matter to apply it on dry skin or after an hydrating toner? Do not wait for your skin to be like bone dry. The problem is that if you wait too, too much, you will just deplete your skin from all the precious water and new skin barrier needs this water to function. So this is not um, a good idea. But you can use first the vitamin C on slightly damp skin. You can maybe wait for one minute maximum, but don't wait until your skin is bone dry. And then you can use, for example, a derivative of vitamin C such as uh, this one from the um, ordinary. But don't mix it or else you are going to disturb the pH of um, the vitamin C. Uh, do I have to wait to layer my next product? Yeah, a tiny bit, like one minute, like I have said, but don't wait until it is like fully bone dry because a dry skin is a skin that suffer a lot and this is not something that you want. Um, how to layer alascorbic acid with acids and uh, humectant? Again, a very, very interesting question. If you have already watched my AM routine, you should know that what I do actually is that I rinse my face just with water, I use first an acid, I'm still using this one actually, I alternate between two. I alternate between the Geek and Gorget, the Countdown, which has 4% of pH, or with the Mandelic Acid by, by Wish Train. Those two, they have a pH around three that I've also measured myself. And what I love about Geek and Gorget is that they disclose the pH. So in that case, you can apply first the acids and then the vitamin C, or you can do it the other way around. Most of the time, what, uh, what probably happens is that if you layer an acid before or after your vitamin C, you may increase the potency of vitamin C in the sense that because the pH will be uh, low enough using two products, the vitamin C will be able to penetrate more. And you can also simply boost the brightening effect. But, but, and there is a but, be very careful. I can do this on my skin because I've been introducing all my actives one at a time, but don't like decide in the morning, like, oh, Cyril is doing this, so I'm going to do it right now. No, you, for example, start with the vitamin C in the morning, and then you are going to slowly introduce a very mild acid and you see how your skin reacts, but don't start like right away or else you might um, basically weaken your skin barrier and high irritation, which is not something <laughs> that uh, you want. 
Um, can you also use a BHA? Absolutely, if you want to use a BHA, so a beta hydroxy acid, like in the form of salicylic acid, for example, is because you are suffering from clogged pores. For example, you have a lot of blackheads, a lot of whiteheads, uh, you also simply have acne, this could be also um, a good idea. If you want to use an hydrating uh, toner, essence, serum, whatever, by the way, check one of my previous video, this is a recent one, uh, do it after, you just do it after those stage, so after the um, vitamin C basically. Um, also on the same alignment, uh, what you cannot use with vitamin C, so there are basically two categories of actives, the first one is simply uh, retinoids, especially retinol, retinol is so damn instable, <laughs> really, so with the very low pH of vitamin C, you may uh, degrade some of the retinol, which is a little bit counterproductive, so it's better to separate them, most of the time you use your vitamins in the morning and you use your retinol in the evening, again, go very slowly, don't start to use <laughs> retinol every single evening and your vitamin C every single morning like this, no, you start slowly, <laughs> people. Um, also, peptides. Peptides will depend, there are a ton and a ton of different peptides. Some of them will be more sensitive to the low pH than others. So of course you can still use it in the morning, but you may decrease the efficacy of some of those peptides. Even though their effect is a little bit so-so, they are probably excellent humectants, I have almost no doubt about this. Uh, but for their other properties, like anti-aging properties, etc., it's a little bit so-so, I have a video about it um, also. So, if you want to be, uh, like, guarantee that they will be working in a way, you use your peptides in the evening, for example, and not in the morning, if you use it after your vitamin C, I mean, this is fine, you are not going to die, it's not going to explode, <laughs> or anyway. Uh, now, in the categories of best products, which vitamin C you recommend and uh, what is the best vitamin C also to use on uh, TRET? Uh, the best vitamin C I recommend. I have two that I have to say that I really, really uh, love. The first one is, of course, I've already talked about it. This is the C-Glow from Geek and Gorgeous and I'm going to film uh, a video totally dedicated to Geek and Gorgeous and I've received a really nice, nice package from Geek and Gorgeous. So like that, I, can, I will be able to review um, some of the products. So I will, um, I mean, you will know. What I love about this one is that it is so damn inexpensive and so damn well formulated, very, very well uh, formulated. Um, the pH is optimal, the concentration of vitamin C is 15%, I mean, perfection. If you really have a lot of hyperpigmentation that is really difficult to tackle, I also really like the one from By Wishtrend, which is the one with 21% of vitamin C. I no longer have it here uh, at home, or I might have a very, very old uh, bottle around here. Uh, this one is also quite good, but don't start immediately with it. It's better to start with 15%. You let your skin to get used to it, and if your skin is good, then you can transition to 20%, but don't go straight to 20% um, again. Um, another one, the C15, the Booster C15 from Polar Choice is always excellent, is also very excellent. I really like also the, the sort of texture, it's very slippery on the skin, so it's also a really nice one. But of course, the price point is uh, much higher, I mean, this is Polar Choice. Because of the quality of Polar Choice, this is not um, a deal breaker for me, but of course, if you're on a budget, uh, please don't go with the Geek um, and Gorgeous. If you have the money, the one from uh, Polar Choice is very um, interesting too. Uh, can you use also vitamin C with uh, tretinoin? Yes, but again, be very careful. Use your tretinoin in the evening. If you are like fully, fully tolerant to it, you can start to introduce vitamin C. I would be still very cautious, maybe use it like three morning per week. Then if it is fine every other morning and then every single day, but don't go like, like crazy um, immediately. Just get some time for your skin. Let your skin do its jobs and introduce one by one those um, active. I've bought expensive brands, how to prevent um, uh, oxidation, very interesting um, questions. Oh yeah, I forgot, the one from SkinCuticals, the CE Ferulic, not the other one, this one is really also excellent, uh, there's also a paper that also has been done by Dr. Pinal actually, in the early 2000s, which is an excellent, is it early 2000s or late 90s? Something like that, but this is an excellent one, way, way too expensive for what it is. Again, if you have the money and etc., it is an excellent one, the best way to prevent oxidation, make sure that it's tightly closed and keep it in the fridge. 
really uh, the brands doesn't tell you this but yeah put it in the fridge one of the reasons because of the lower temperature the agitations of the molecules is reduced and therefore the oxidation process is slowed down thanks to the fridge so it's better and you are more guaranteed that your vitamin c is fresh so in the fridge okay uh, now in the random uh, part of the question so i'm a man how can i use vitamin c after shaving okay um of course if you are uh, shaving your face or you are i don't know you are using wax or something like that something that can irritate the um, your skin barrier if you use vitamin c it will just burn because of the very low ph so you have a choice here you can either change the way that you shave uh, i really enjoy personally the one blade from um, philips to shave so this is an electric shaver it is quite close but not as close as a manual one but like this it is not going to irritate your skin this is what i use to shave my uh, neck so this is the first possibility if you really want to use uh, a manual one you can also maybe i don't know if you shave if you don't shave every morning just use your vitamin c in between something like that so not the day that you are uh, shaving because shaving every single day could be quite irritating on your skin or because you prefer to shave every single day or you have to shave every single day uh, simply use your vitamin c in the um, evening and if you are using a retinoid you can also use it in the morning but again use your damn spf and I mean, you know my content. I'm always promoting <laughs> sunscreen anyway, so it should not be um, a problem. Have I ever tried the Melano CC? Uh, so this is a Japanese brand. Um, I've actually bought it, but I cannot find the damn product. I have no idea where it is. This stuff that just disappeared from my apartment. So the answer is no, <laughs> basically. Is it true that vitamin C can act like a self uh, turner, you know, like Donald Trump? <laughs> this question makes me <laughs> laugh <laughs> so, so much. Uh, yes, it is. I've discovered this uh, thanks to um, a La Muffin Beauty Science lover so much. Um, she's a chemist, so I really love how she nerds about uh, chemistry, which I'm not a chemist, remember, I'm a biologist. Um, so yes, it is true. Is it something that is happening to everyone? No. The way to tell actually is that if at the end of the day you're a little bit of yellow, like yellowish, you rinse your face, you cleanse your face and you are no longer like yellow or orange, it just means that the vitamin C had just um, oxidized into dehydroascorbic uh, acid. So in that case, this is yellow. Or if uh, the, the color is persistent, I know that some of you have uh, reported me uh, this, it means that it has been oxidized a second time uh, into a rethrilose, I think it's uh, the name of this uh, sort of sugar, that uh, indeed uh, tends to tan the skin. So in that case, it just means that vitamin C, unfortunately, is not for you. But um, a derivative might work. Again, comment down below if you want me to, to make a video dedicated to derivatives. Um, Okay, so basically that's it. Uh, yeah, one last question was about, uh, can I do a video about vitamin C derivatives? Yes, I can. <laughs> so I, uh, tell me down below if you have uh, liked this kind of video where I basically answer your question about one active or one subject. <laughs> Actually, if you did like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you're new, you know what to do. Subscribe, subscribe, and don't forget uh, the bell. Uh, again, thank you so, so much for your time. Check also my two Instagram accounts. I'm all over the place. Thank you so, so much for being here. And I will see you next time. Au revoir.